So better late than ever. <laughs> I, 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 we had a crazy day, which is ironic because the, this podcast has been on my mind for quite a while. So I'm just happy that I'm sitting at my desk and ready to talk. Uh, it has been a wonderful few weeks, lots of travel. Uh, this time of year, we're in that mode of getting models ready to travel. We're seeing the girls that are off for the summer. And so when this article first came to my attention, it was through a really dear friend of ours who just always kind of keeps us in the loop. And when she sent us this story, she was like, I just feel like, um, there's a lot of truth to this article that was in Fashionista. It was on April 30th and it was uh, in reference, it was a story about Ruth Bell and I do think it was really well written. I thought there was a lot of valid points, but of course, just like anything, when, when, when something involves something that you feel passionate about or you know, you've given your life's work to, maybe you're gonna read things in a little bit different way and have things stand out um, that kind of make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, which is exactly what happened. And I posted about it yesterday briefly because, and I, the interesting thing is today we had one of our models, Abby, come in. Um, we were needing to shoot some digitals before she leaves for New York and, um, one of the reasons that we ended up get kind of pushing back to when we even had time to record this podcast is because, you know, we just sat and really talked about how much this industry is misunderstood. She's from Iowa and she talks about how a lot of people back home don't understand really what she does, the kind of things that are said to her, her mother and her family because of things being mis misunderstood. And I really honestly think it's kind of a common thing on both sides. And I've spoken about this a lot, um, particularly in the podcasts that we've done. Jeff and I are kind of in this unique situation where we are in middle America. We're scouting great models, not only here, but from really all over at this point, placing models around the world. So we're plugged into and yet removed. Um, and by the same token, for over a decade, we've gone to every Fashion Week season from beginning to end. We travel, we are connected to the great casting directors and people in the business, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like we've seen, we're kind of, our feet are in both places. And I think that that is an interesting place. And now 25 years in, as I reflect, I really realize that it's a unique place. And I wanted to speak to a few things because I think it's really important. Um, we're obviously passionate and love the modeling industry. I did a podcast a few weeks ago talking about just why I love it. Um, we love models, we love young people, we love what this can bring to someone. Uh, we find it to be very rewarding. And also we're really excited to see other people excited about scouting and, and learning how to carve their place in this industry. And we're so passionate about the industry, we'd rather help more people to come at it from a place that is with the right perspective. And that was another reason why we just wanted to share um, a little bit that I think will help help clear things up for people outside of our industry, for aspiring models, for people who are interested in this end of it. And so that's how this all unfolded. I, I pulled a few of the, the, the quotes that kind of initially made me stop for a minute. The first being, um, she talked about, you know, being scouted and the what she said was, I do think we should be much more critical of a system in which fully grown adults scout girls she used quotes too i use air quotes a lot and there there were those in here too where teenage girls hang out looking for the next hot talent i realize that first of all in many industries people scout talent whether it be musicians in the entertainment world um in sports jeff was saying how when he was young and 
and he was potentially looking to play football after high school, scouts would come watch. It's kind of the nature of really many, many things. It's not just the modeling industry that has people that scout. I also know that is in any industry, there are good and bad. Um, and I, we have always felt very protective knowing um, people can misrepresent things and that's not what I'm talking about. When somebody comes in and they're not a legitimate agent or scout or mother agent that has a track record, um, yes, that's not cool. But for those of us who have spent decades doing this um, and we're older, <laughs> Uh, I really feel like what we, when we're out looking or in any context, yesterday we were having lunch with our granddaughter at uh, a little, uh, at Noodles and Company, and this girl walks in with her mom, and our natural thing, we're like, look at that girl, so beautiful. We feel it's a responsibility to say to her, hey, maybe this could be for you. Maybe it isn't, but maybe it could be. Um, and out of context, maybe that seems questionable, but I don't think in other arenas it would be, in the music world, in the entertainment world, in the sports world. And so I think in the modeling world as a legitimate uh, scout, I think that it's a wonderful thing. I really do. I'm somebody who, I love words and on many of the podcasts, I will look up on my dictionary.com. I love to literally say, what does it mean? What, what is the root of it? Scout, to act as a scout, to examine, inspect, to observe. We're such observers to seek and search for. It's been really rewarding now, this many years in, to see that, yes, not only have we had many success stories who have longevity, and I appreciated the article talking about how there needs to be more of that and we are in full agreement. But I've also seen how time in this industry as a model can lead to other really beautiful discoveries about a person. Um, we have people who live in New York City because of their, their years as a model. We have people who are on the other side of the industry, who work at agencies, who are photographers, who are stylists, who are scouts, who are creatives, and it came out of, it was birthed out of their time as a model. And I think that that is another aspect of this big, beautiful picture that people sometimes miss. And um, I think that it's time that more of those things are shared uh, more stories because they're inspiring, quite frankly, and it can it can it can lead to so many things. Even if it's just the travel and and realizing that the world is a big, beautiful place. And it, we've had so many times where the first time that someone got in an airplane, including Ashton Kutcher, was because it started as a model. She also said these scouts promise fame and fortune to these young girls. But as anyone who has been in the industry longer than a few years knows, it's exceedingly rare for the majority of models to build a long, steady career. And many, many more are likely to have a handful of big seasons, if they're lucky, and most fall into debt to their agencies in the process. I can say, in, I can speak to what we've experienced at Mother, and I can say that our track record with all humility is pretty impressive. And for the models that don't have longevity, I can also say that the vast majority of the time, it was for a myriad of reasons outside of the industry. Maybe they weren't passionate about it. Maybe they didn't have the work ethic. Maybe it w wasn't for them and it led to something else. I can also say on the other side of it, and I think that this holds true is in athletics, in sports, in many sports, in the entertainment world. Our daughter was a professional dancer for many years. In every endeavor that I can think, it's the ones who have the work ethic, um, who are passionate about it, who are really committed, who stick it out. Um, 
those are the ones that are gonna be more successful. They're the ones that are gonna have longevity. Oh, I'm so bummed. I just remembered about the quote of Kevin Bacon and it's in my phone. Um, I saw an interview on CBS Sunday Morning um, yesterday and they were interviewing him about longevity because he's had a long, you know, what's the secret to longevity? And I thought it was amazing what he said. He said, the secret to longevity is longevity. It's that you don't quit. And he said, because eventually somebody in the arena is gonna turn around and see Kevin Bacon and go, you know what, I always liked that guy. And for the models that we've had that have had decade, over a decade long career, that is what happened. They didn't quit, they kept going. And that's applicable, quite frankly, to any worthy endeavor, any industry, including Jeff and I. <laughs> who are still standing. <laughs> um, she also mentions, this begs the question, how can we fix things? For starters, I don't think we should be scouting or hiring models under the age of 18. That includes grooming underage girls, a gross phrase to begin with. I'm gonna to talk to both points. Um, I realize that in today's world, grooming can be a, wor a word that in a negative context is a negative. But the word groom in the dictionary says to tend carefully as to a person or dress, to prepare for a position. Um, we rarely scout super young girls uh, and we don't work with kids. On rare occasions, we've had a few younger girls in the age range that she mentions that are 11 and 12 who we make very clear to their parents look we're not going to be taking measurements we're not shooting in a two-piece we're not doing any of that can they participate in a few things here and there as far as shows and very age appropriate things yes but beyond that we will not do it we simply will not do it now when we have somebody who's 13, 14, same thing. We just want it to be fun. We want it to be social. We don't charge for any of these things, by the way. It's an opportunity for them to get their feet wet and, and s figure out what that is. And we, as I said, just have a couple of, of girls that kind of are in that category that are now more 14, 15, 16, which is when we do start grooming and developing them. And here's the reality. If we want to have longevity, of models in this career, they need that. They need the time to come into themselves. The way that we accomplish that, we do new face weekends, we do group things. We have a show every year that we're so proud of called Tribute, where they walk on a runway and they're surrounded by models who are really positive. We've created a culture that is so supportive and encouraging that irregardless if they ever model ever I know that they walk away with a better sense of who they are and that is the most important part of our goal now on the other side of it models like Alana Arrington for example who we started her when she was 14 she participated in things that we were doing did a few things in other markets so by the time that she was old enough and she did that first fashion week season, she had experienced things. She came in it as ready as she could be. And even in that, you can only be so ready. And that's the other reason why we're very active mother agents in the sense that we are there because it does take a lot to, to have a model be successful. And we don't take it lightly and we're very responsible in that and we feel that everyone should be that way. The other thing is that yes, we are in full agreement about the age 18 um, initiative when you're talking about the high fashion things and, and uh, um, fashion week. We were honored to be a part, the only mother agent that was interviewed for the article in last year's September issue of American Vogue talking about what is age appropriate. We are absolutely there, but as in any sport, whether you're training to be an Olympic athlete or um, any athletic endeavor, you, you have to start 
ideally, if you have that groundwork when you're young, that can be great. Now, on the other side of it, it is easier when we scout somebody who's 17, 18 years old, and they're in an age-appropriate place where we can move a little more quickly. But even in that, unless that young person is ready socially, they're ready uh, physically, they're ready for the competitive side of it, we will move slowly. We, we're never going to be in a hurry. And in the article, that was something that I appreciated you, that was written about is that it is important that as an industry, we slow things down and do as much as we possibly can to create longevity. To every scout out there or, or agency out there that slow down. If, if your model isn't ready, do not put them out there ahead of time. It's, it's not fair. You should do the best that you can to move slowly. So that's the grooming part. Develop. Develop means to bring out the capabilities or possibilities of, to cause, to grow or expand, to bring into being, to generate, to evolve. Um, sometimes, and it was referenced in this article about the system. Um, we see it as a great advantage that in the modeling world, if somebody has the potential to do this, that there are models apartments that are there to help you so that you don't have to find your own place to live, that there are things that can be advanced. And I can say that I'm a woman's woman. I was a single mom at 19. I had my first business at age 23. It was an aerobic workout studio called Body Heat. Yes, you heard it here. And I got an SBA loan. I was so proud of being able to do that and it went belly up. It lasted about a year and of course I thought it was a crushing failure and I was never going to be a success again but in hindsight I learned a lot in the process but there was a debt. The average college student walks away and I just heard this on um, Good Morning America or something a few weeks ago. The average college student walks away with about $30,000 of debt. Um, so a little debt here or there in the beginning of building a business because as a model you're an independent business owner of the business of yourself and you have the the opportunity to travel and to make a great living and discover so much about yourself which is what abby and i were talking about earlier and the the measure of that is well it's immeasurable um instead of the constant critique of that I look at how many agency owners that we know are left with doing all that they can do to help a model get started, helping them financially, opening up the doors, but there is always the risk that the model can walk away or not do well, so the risk is on both sides. But the fact that there is a system in place instead of it always being critiqued as negative, I think that there's something really pretty incredible that there's a system in place to help. But again, it's all your perspective on how you see it. Agents and everyone in the industry, this is another quote from the article, from casting directors to editorial directors for that matter, should focus on helping their models build long-term sustainable careers instead of constantly rotating through flash in the pan moments. Amen, I'm 100% with you on that. I agree, I agree, we agree we have a responsibility to make our business a better place. As a mother agent, people don't understand um, always what we do, but as a mother agent, after, for what we have done now uh, 25 plus years, is we look for somebody who has potential. We don't charge for runway coaching, test shoots, any of it, we, we do it. And then we provide opportunities, we, we do new face events, we bring people in, and we literally, literally see it as planting seeds in these young people to see who it resonates with, to see who's really made for this. Um, but the financial rewards for us come later. It comes down the road when a model is actually working and it doesn't come out of the model's pocket. It comes out of the agency's percentage of who we place that model with. So the benefit 
for a model to have a strong mother agent that's really there for them is immeasurable. I will say that there are agents, uh, agencies out there, a couple of big ones in particular, that disregard or minimalize the efforts of mother agents. And for those reasons, we choose not to work with those agencies because the reality is a model just doesn't fall out from the sky and happen. And we've committed years and years and years and years in putting everything that we have into developing a model, helping that model navigate, especially in those early years, what that takes. And we're willing to do it and we're happy to do it knowing that the reward will come later, harvest time will come later, and that's just the nature of it. I think the industry as a whole, the more that you respect those people that find and commit and groom and develop, the greater the culture as a whole our industry would be. Our son is a chef, and one of the things that we love witnessing in the culinary world of, in St. Louis, which has become a really thriving culinary world, is that they support each other. They have each other's back. There is a mutual respect. If anything, this industry needs more people in high levels to respect the people that are grinding, walking around festivals and going to a mall and being that person that can look at somebody and say, I see potential in you and I'm going to pour myself into you to help you get there. And when you reach that top, that they're going to respect and not forget how they got there. You can't praise the model and not acknowledge who helped them get there. So as, as models out there, for those models, we have such great ones that are loyal and hardworking and incredible and it's wonderful to see you ascending and rising to the top. We really believe that that's just gonna continue and that's something we're super proud of. Um, are there things that can make this industry better? Yes, uh, including opening up a conversation and that's why I think this article was really important and we'd love to expand on the conversation because there's so much more that can be said. Uh, so we appreciate it, but we're always going to speak up, of course, for our end, the scouting, the grooming, the developing, the co-managing along with the agencies that we place our models with. Um, all of our models deserve the best that we can give them, including everybody that helps get them to where they are. And finally, this was a quote. I love Shalom Harlow. She's one of my all-time favorite models from back in the day. I follow her on Instagram. And a few weeks ago, she posted her original comp card from back in the day. And I love what she said. And it really speaks to what we're talking about here today. And that is this. She said, I was 15 or 16 years young. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to develop a sense of myself on camera and adapt to the industry before jumping in to the deep end in Paris at 17. I wish that the younger generations had access to this incubation period to develop their craft and sense of themselves. For me, I believe it made all the difference. Growth and patience is key. Ooh, I have goosies. It, it, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And as an industry, we need to slow down so that we can create more Shalom Harlows and, and really stand behind them as people and shout to the mountaintop that this is an industry that models at this level do so much to be at that level and it should be applauded. It should be applauded in the same way that the, the athletes that are at the top of their game, the people in the entertainment world, the people in all these different kinds of endeavors. Um, it's really, really incredible. And that's the reason why I love models. And that's the reason why I love being a scout. And that's the reason why I know grooming and developing them is critical. And I hope that this informs people and keeps the conversation going and thank you fashionista for the article and allowing me to speak a little bit about our perspective and until next monday make it a great week thank you so much for listening and watching have a great day